Hi everyone, my name is Linda and I'm with Remade with Love. You can find me on Facebook and YouTube. I also have a web page and I'll give you details a little bit later about that. I'm so glad that you've joined me today during the Paint-a-thon. Um, a few things about me before I get started. I'm a Midwest girl raised in Chicago and I've been living in St. Louis where I've enjoyed being, but as a Midwesterner, we never can count on the weather. I mean, this week it's been what, 80 degrees? It's been 45 degrees as the high. It's been raining. I think it snowed last week even. So we're in this kind of weird <laughs> weather pattern, but I've been wanting to bring spring truly in. And so as I was looking around for things to repurpose for the Paint-a-thon, I realized that I would like to take a piece of furniture that welcomes spring in. So I've got two benches that can be used in my sunroom, but using the product that I'll be demonstrating today, I'll now be able to move them from my sunroom out onto the patio for when I need additional seating. So come and join me as I demonstrate using Amy Howard's new Miracle Paint. Uh, these are the things that I'll be working with today. First thing I'm going to be using is some of Amy Howard's Miracle Paint. This is a wonderful paint, new. It's a water-based enamel. So Amy has not had this product before, um, but I'm totally looking forward to using it with you. So enamel has properties that um, make it adhere very well to metal or wood or plastic or um, I believe even glass. Um, it is somewhat flexible because it is an enamel, which is exactly what I was looking for for the piece, pieces that I've picked out to do. And um, it's self-leveling. You do not have to put a product on like a wax or a matte sealer to seal it once you have uh, let it dry. It can handle uh, the sun, whether it comes into your sunroom and you've got those UV rays or whether you take it out on your patio and you have it sitting out in the blazing sun or the rainy days that are all too often coming and going here. Um, and and it, it will be protected. So that's awesome. Um, that's what I'll be using. The other products that I'll use um, as I go along, because my product was not protected before, because it was outside for a little bit and it um, had been exposed to weather and it's had some corrosion, um, I'm going to be cleaning it. But before I do that, I, I did use a rust converting metal primer. So please check your piece out, whatever you're going to be doing, if you're using this for an indoor outdoor, or if it has any kind of metal, which this does, um, you want to check for degradation of the, the piece. Uh, you want it to look clean and crisp and pretty. So check the little edges and the, you know, where the metal meets or where the piece um, comes together for the wrought iron. Um, it may have corrosion. Get rid of that. Um, Use your little wire brisk, and I'll take you through that to, to get that off. And then you want to definitely clean the whole thing with Clean Slate. Now I want to use this, and, and you want to make sure your preparation includes cleaning it with this, because if there's any oil, when you put on your product, when you put your paint on it, you'll paint over it, it'll probably lift away as it dries, and you'll see spots. It will look um, blotchy and you'll know that your paint has not adhered. So you definitely need to use that. So I'm gonna um, take the corrosion off, clean it with clean slate. I'm gonna have my Miracle Paint stirred and ready to go. And with the Miracle Paint, there's a couple ways you can, um, you can put it on. Synthetic brushes is the way to go. I love little tiny ones to get in cracks or the wedge uh, brush that Amy has so that I can almost kind of pounce in those corners and get deep in there and get the, the um, paint in, but also a high density foam roller. Uh, you'll of course need some measuring tools and a tray to put your things in, stir sticks, paint opener. Um, a little bit later, 
I'm going to be using, once it's dried, I'm going to be using something that'll give depth, that'll bring some added um, interest to the piece. And I'm going to be doing that by using uh, Amy's Glazed Over. So even though I don't have to seal the bench that I'll be doing, I'm going to use Glazed Over water and enough paint color. And it can be a one-step paint that I can use as a glaze. I'm gonna brush it on and wipe it off. It'll remain in the cracks, give it a little bit of a tint and some depth to it. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to use Italian silver, which is this, or pecan pie. So we'll figure it out as we go along. And so you'll need um, some rags, a jar to go ahead and put your um, glaze mix in and also some baby wipes in case you get the enamel on your hands or you get any product where you don't want it. So let's get started. Okay, so here is my bench and it's gonna be a little bit hard for you to see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and post a picture uh, and hopefully they'll attach it to my video or my after so you can see the whole thing. But it is, it stands about 18 to 20 inches tall and it's got these great, um, you know, four legs with the um, hardware on top. It's all metal except for it's got this great crossbar. You can see it's got some, hold on, let me... <laughs> put it up here, it's got some damage. So this is where I use that um, bonder to get rid of all of the rust there. Um, it's got the crossbars, four legs. It's really sweet and it has these leather-like um, straps so that you can put your cushion on here and sit down. So let me go ahead and take you through um, what I did. I went ahead and I used you're going to see this okay. I might turn it the other way for you to get a better idea. Hold on here. All right, so we're going to work on it this way. So you can see that this has some rust right here on it. And I just, what I end up do, doing is, well, first of all, if you have anything that has metal, and this is all like a wrought iron metal, um, you need to go ahead and clean it and you don't want to disturb any of the finishes unless you've tested it and it's lead free. Get those really inexpensive um, kits at Lowe's, maybe $20 for a number of tests. And all I did with this was there wasn't any huge lifting, but I want to remove this. Now, if you're concerned at all, please wear a mask with the dust. If you're inside, go ahead and do that. And all I want to do is get down to where this is going to be flat and no rust or finish will come off. Because if I paint on this without it being um, worked, it's going to be uh, lifting off and I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and get in there and then of course in here. Um, I'm not going to do it all right now because that would take all of my 20 minutes. But I do want to let you know, all I do is with this degreaser, or sorry, with this rust converting metal primer, you just open it up, you paint it in the cracks here, <coughs> you paint it, and it will turn black and then become part of the <coughs> become part of the bench and you won't have to worry about it flaking and it will also take your paint. So right now for this demonstration, I'm, <coughs> I'm gonna pretend that's done. So the next thing you're gonna do is take your clean slate product. And all you need to do with this is get a, a rag and open it up. I usually give it a, a few good shakes on the rag and then it's wet and I am going to clean every inch of the bench before I paint. Now for the sake of this demo, I am only going to 
do part of the painting because I want to be able to show you as much as possible. Also, although this is a miracle paint I'm using, and the miracle is, you know, it's going to dry within 20 minutes as a water-based enamel, give me that flexibility I need. I also want to, and, and be able to attach and adhere to uh, iron or this, these straps. So any of this um, wood, glass, whatever I'm using, it's gonna attach. When, I be, when I'm done with all this, I could clean it with clean slate. You can see how dirty that was just from the light cleaning that I've done. Um, so anyway, the miracle is it's it's going to have UV protectants. It's going to be great, but I can't get it all done in my allotted time. So I am just going to go ahead and paint some of the um, straps and some of the wrought iron so you can see how easily that works as a product done here. Actually going to push this up a little. I'm going to put it to the side here. So I'm going to bring in my little tray. I'm going to go ahead and open my my miracle paint. Now, if yours is settled, like this is a bright, bright color, that is not how it dries. And a lot of this is due to the fact that this is not stirred, it's settled. So we wanna make sure it's completely stirred. It may take a few minutes here. I'll get this stirred up. In the meantime, my clean slate is drying. It's removed the dirt and the grease and whatever is on there that would stop my Miracle Paint from adhering. And I've got my scoop ready to scoop some of this up and into my pan here. I'm going to use a roller. Like I told you, I would like to use my synthetic, my high density roller to have this adhere and then see isn't that looking better that's looking creamier it's got a, a lighter tint to it and even though this looks creamier and lighter it will dry a little bit darker so I want to make sure all of that is incorporated Okay, that looks good. It's kind of a seafoam green, I love this. This paint actually comes in the 101 paint colors that Amy Howard's One Step Paint Comes in. So if you're interested in any of the Miracle Paint, just go on and pop on over to her One Step site, choose your color, and then order it as the Miracle Paint. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll pop this into the sink. Okay, um, so we've got it here. And I'm just going to get a little bit on my brush to do a little offloading so I'm not dripping. And you can see how this has dried and I'm just going to go right over it with the brush. I'm not worried about 100% coverage. In fact, with a high density roller, it's going to be a lighter coverage than if you were to use a brush, which I'll use in a minute and show you about that. Um, but you want to concern yourself with just getting adhesion 
and making it smooth and having a wet line on this, meaning I don't want a stop and start anywhere. I want it to try and bridge all these areas so it's it will um, flow from one space to another. And you can see how easily that rolled on, right? Super simple. Anybody can do this. So once I've got my basics done, I can even take this and start rolling a little. But you notice I'm not getting into the cracks and crevices. So with my brush, I'm gonna come back and hit this with almost a pouncing into, at kind of an angle, into all the cracks and crevices. That's awesome. Now continue that on the underneath side because these straps wrap around important to get anywhere that somebody might see. These are going to be gorgeous. It's such a nice light color for outside. I can't wait to get that done. Now I'm going to turn this around and I'll show you the work that I've done on um, the other side and we'll get started on, that's already dry, on the other side and I'll go ahead and show you the next step. So hold on while I change the camera. Okay, this is actually the sister bench, and I wanted to show you how this has two coats on it, and it's a beautiful finish. I've actually, I've got one coat on in some places and two coats on in the others, because I wanted to show you what it looked like and what I'll have to do. So on this wrought iron, I only have one coat of the Miracle Paint, but it is pretty well covered. There's little places where you can see um, it needs some co more coverage. I went ahead and taped the feet because I'm going to do something else with them. Um, but you can see how with a combination of the uh, acrylic paintbrush and the roller, I'm going to get great coverage in just a few passes. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up with what I can for this. And we'll show you the next step that's going to happen. Whoop. Get more coverage on this. And do my do my legs here and where I had the bonding agent. Move it over a little bit. You can see it's covering the area that I had the bonding agent for the rusted wrought iron. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'll get in there with a little brush in a second and finish up there. Here I probably just had to touch up in a few places but it's dried level, uh, even though this has been <laughs> upside down, right side up, uh, it was wet. It has done really well in drying. show you on these legs. Now I can go ahead and I can either take a paintbrush or a roller and finish up with the legs as well as the wrought iron here. And I don't have to worry. It's not thin enough that it's going to drip down when I use the roller. Remember rollers give not uh, as thick a coverage as a paintbrush would. And I can go ahead and put in the little detail around the bends. Get that 
other brush. It's a little bit thicker to go in between. I'm not going to worry about brush strokes because of the leveling. Of course, I'm trying to paint it as smoothly as I can, but I don't have to worry that it's going to be a big line of demarcation where all this is. The only place it's going to look a little different is where the rusted spots were, but that's going to be well underneath. I could have built that up with a Bondo or something else. That's okay. So, here we go. Just a moment, my other has dried. I'm going to go back to using that. This may need three coats. It'll all depend on how I see that it looks after I'm done. But what do you think? Doesn't that look great? Okay, I'm going to get my other piece. Hold on. Okay, so we've got our dried bench and it's been painted with our miracle paint and I'm loving it. And now I'm going to put a custom glaze on top. Now, you can leave this as is. You don't have to have the custom glaze, but I thought it would be a great way to give it a little extra depth, a little extra um, interest, and it would help pick up the colors that I'm going to use on my bench. And I forgot to show you, I just ran to go get it. But this is going to be the cushion. So as it stands, I could have left it with this green, um, greenish seafoam color. It would look great, but I'm going to bring in some of the darker colors by using a custom dark blue. I pulled another fast one. My husband said, why don't you use dark blue? He's whispering in my ear as I'm painting today. So I mixed up um, equal parts of water and Amy Howard's glazed over and her one step paint color and it's actually a color of the month but you could get something similar um, in a in a one step everyday color but this one happens to me midnight dreams so I'm mixing equal parts of each together and I've done that ahead of time so I had it here mixed um, mix it thoroughly the glazed over likes to settle down and you just want to keep agitating as you go. Because this is very watery, go ahead and get the excess off by just putting it on the sides of the um, cup to offload. And I'm actually going to show you how we can give this a wonderful custom color on top. Now, with the one step mixed in with the glazed over, you're going to have a finish that will be a seal on top of the Miracle Paint. Now the Miracle Paint doesn't need a seal, but the One Step does. So, and I'm just gonna show you slightly on here. I want this to, to puddle and gather, but I don't want it to cover my whole sea foam color. So, moving this over to try and get this more in the light so you can see. So I have this on here. I put it on for just a few seconds and I want to take my rag and immediately start twisting and turning and blotting. I don't want there to be any line of demarcation. I don't want there to be a brush stroke or a swipe mark if I can help it. It's okay if it's a little more modeled in some places than others, especially when it puddles down in the cracks and crevices it gives it that wonderful look and hopefully you can see this okay try to break it down just a little bit more do a little more 
more for you here. Let's bring this back. And I can just continue up here. So I'm just swiping around the collar. I try and do one section at a time. This dries very quickly. And I want to try and achieve the same look throughout my piece. So I will be getting a little dirty. You might want to put some gloves on. But this is how you'll get that great custom glaze on top. Well, that ticked off all my boxes. Messy, fun, creative, and being able to reimagine furniture. I hope you found that as fun as I did. And if you enjoyed watching me today, please follow me on Facebook and YouTube at Remade with Love. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and have fun watching the rest of the paint a -thon. Bye bye.